Last year, I did a tour of my entire home lab, and within this last year, a good bit has changed, so let's do this all over again. Now this time, I'm gonna separate the tour into two videos. Hardware, which we'll be taking a look at in this video, and software, so subscribe if you wanna watch that when it goes live, or maybe you're watching this like a year from now, so check the description for the link. In terms of hardware in my home lab, I have it broken down into three categories, networking, servers, and miscellaneous. Let's start with networking. I actually have a dual WAN setup now with my primary being AT&T one gig fiber and my backup being Xfinity cable. These both feed into my gateway, which is the Unified Dream Machine Pro, switching it up from my PFSense box from last year. Oh, by the way, I'll leave links to any specific videos I have covering any of this hardware down in the description, along with links to every single product if you wanna be a cool dude like me. The UDM Pro feeds the rest of my Unify devices and the cohesive ecosystem is definitely nice compared to when I was running PFSense. But man, do I miss the PFSense firewall rules and built-in reverse proxy. Connected directly to my UDM Pro is my main switch, which is the Unify Enterprise 24 PoE. It's got 12 one gig ports and 12 2.5 gig ports, all with PoE plus capability. It also has two 10 gig SFP plus ports, which we are putting to use as you'll see in a bit. I think that this is the perfect switch for a home lab. It's got a good amount of 2.5 gig ports, some 10 gig and lots of PoE power. Yes, I know you're a special snowflake and have vastly different needs, but for most people, this will get the job done. So with one of those 10 gig ports, I'm actually running fiber from my rack all the way to one of my bedroom closets to a Unify Enterprise 8 port PoE. Why am I doing this? Well, when the house was built, they ran all the Cat 5e from all the rooms in the house to that closet. This gave me two options, put all the networking gear in that closet or run a 10 gig backbone from the rack and have the switch in there. The Enterprise 8 works pretty well for this considering that there are only seven runs that need to be connected. And since all the ports are 2.5 gig, we have high speed Cat 5e to each room now with PoE for our access points. I have a little Flex Mini in there as well for some extra devices that don't need PoE or 2.5 gig. And before we get into the wild world of Wi-Fi, let's talk about my last main switch in the lab, the Enterprise XG24. This thing is dumb. 24 10 gig RJ45 ports and two 25 gig SFP28 ports. Remember how I said the Enterprise 24 PoE is the perfect switch for most home labbers? Well, this one isn't that. It is so overkill. Unless you have more than like eight 10 gig devices in your lab, then you'd be better off just getting two Flex XGs, which are four port 10 gig devices and are only $300 each. You'll see why in a bit why I needed this switch when we get to our servers. So Wi-Fi, nature's modern day carrier pigeon. I have a total of five access points in the house, three of them being in-wall ACs connected to that closeted Enterprise 8. These take care of the entire first floor, and one thing I really like about them is that they're PoE powered, but can also daisy chain a PoE connection via one of the four ports on the bottom. So it essentially acts as a little switch too. I know you're thinking, Brett, you have a 15 bajillion dollar 10 gig switch in your rack, but you only have Wi-Fi AC? Yeah, and I have a good reason for that. I'm an inpatient child. When I was upgrading to these in-wall access points, I wanted the Wi-Fi 6 versions, but they were sold out. And instead of waiting a week, I decided that I needed access points right away and settled for the AC versions. Do I regret it? Yeah. Do I think my internet experience would be noticeably different? No, but I'd know. I'd know. But don't worry, fellow nerds, the other two access points should get you up and going. Upstairs, I have a U6 Pro, which is a 4x4 Wi-Fi 6 device. It's pretty solid, and I think I've gotten around 800 megabits per second over Wi-Fi to my MacBook, which is dope considering that this isn't even Wi-Fi 6E. Then we have an access point outside on the patio, which is a U6 long range. I don't actually think that I need the long range version, but I figured why not. 
Yes, many of my purchases are fueled by sleep deprivation and a YOLO mentality. Overall, I'm content with this setup. If Unify wants to sponsor an upgrade though, I'm listening. Other than a few more little flex minis, that pretty much covers my networking setup. I do also have a TP-Link Omada short stack setup that I use for testing Omada releases and it kind of acts as a separate test land, so that's cool. Oh, and I do wanna show what I think is one of the greatest additions an enthusiast home labber can add to their rack. It's called the patch box and it's basically a retractable patch panel. Sounds lame, but man, I love this thing. I am constantly changing gear in my rack and moving stuff around. And when I do that, I need to redo my cable management or make new cable lengths or deal with like six feet of slack for a one foot run since that was the cable that was there before. This thing ensures that every run is exactly the right length. And when the cables aren't in use, they're tucked away in their slot ready to fight the good fight another day. I said they're for enthusiasts because they're pretty freaking expensive, but if you're bad with money like me or just really like cable management, then you'll wanna check it out. Okay, so you network guys can get your hands out of your pants. We're moving on to servers. Wait, why are both of your hands in there now? Let's start with what I've always called my main server. This is my AMD Epic 7302 system, 16 cores with 256 gigs of DDR4 ECC RAM, 12 12 terabyte drives, an ASRock Rack Rome 8D2T motherboard with dual 10 gig networking and seven full PCIe 16X slots. We got a 40 gig Mellanox Connect X3 NIC, an Asus Hyper M.2 card with four two terabyte Samsung Pro NVMe drives, an LSI 9300 16i HBA card, and an RTX 2070 Super. Whew, I need some water. The case is nothing fancy, just your standard Rose Wheel 4U that you see everywhere and a Noctua NHU9 cooler, which works extremely well. This is what I would consider my first real server and has been doing the heavy lifting for about three years now. It runs Proxmox and all the drives are passed through to a TrueNAS VM, but more on that in the software video. Some of the services have been moved though to my highly available Proxmox cluster, running on three of these skinny boys. Each of these is a Supermicro X10 SDV4C TLN2F, which runs a four core eight thread Xeon 1521. They also each have a Micron 7400 Pro two terabyte U.2 solid state drive and are housed in these in-win IWRF100 chassis. Overall, these aren't the most powerful systems, but I don't need them to be. I need them to be powerful enough to run some basic services in Docker and handle a Ceph cluster, which they can do pretty well since each of them has dual 10 gig networking. So if we're counting, that's already eight 10 gig ports between my main server and this cluster. Kind of see why I totally 100% needed that Enterprise XG switch, right? Right? Nod. Looking back, I do wish I would have gone with the boards with the 1541 chips built in to get a few more cores, but honestly, this setup does everything I need while pulling under 100 watts total, so I can't complain. Next, we have the newest addition to the home lab, and honestly, I don't even know if it's in the rack yet at the time I'm shooting this B-roll, but it's the HL15 from 45 drives. This is probably my favorite piece of hardware in my lab. It certainly looks nice on camera and all of that, but man, the build quality here with the cold rolled steel and the powder coating is, mwah. It's a full 4U system with 15 friction mount bays for storage. These all connect to the motherboard via the built-in backplane too. I have the pre-built version from 45 Drive, so that comes with the Supermicro X11 SPH 9 CTF, the Xeon Bronze 3204 and 32 gigs of RAM. For a storage server, the six core, six thread Xeon 3204 is adequate enough, but for a do-it-all machine, I'd probably want something with a bit more oomph, like uh, this video coming soon. I do have a lot more to say about this thing, but That'll be in its own video, but the gist of it is that, yes, it's designed for home labbers, just home labbers with money to spend. Moving on, we have my backup server, which is actually a Synology system. 
It's a Synology RS822 Plus with 32 gigs of RAM and four 12 terabyte Synology hard drives. I just recently replaced my old backup system running TrueNAS with this for a few reasons that I cover in that video, but for the most part, I just wanted to utilize the Synology ecosystem more. Every time I would mess around in there, I was like, man, it would be nice if I was actually using some of this stuff in my lab. So now I am. I'm also a fan of the 1U form factor. Although if I need to add more storage, I'll either have to buy larger capacity drives or get a 1U extension bay and add more 12 terabyte drives. At this point, I'm not really worried about that. So we'll burn that bridge when the time comes. A big part of using a Synology is for the easy remote backups, which is why we have a Synology DS923 Plus as our remote server. This is at a friend of mine's house and is housing four 10 terabyte HDST Helium disks, the same exact ones that are in my main TrueNAS system. And boy, do I love those drives. Not much to say about it. It's probably a pretty capable machine, but right now it just sits there and waits for me to throw a few hundred gigs worth of YouTube outtakes at it. And that kind of does it for my servers, but I do have a few other machines in here worthy of honorable mentions. I have a little streaming mini PC in here that's connected to a tiny pilot KVM, so I can use it from pretty much anywhere. Then I have my main PC in my rack, which is goofy as hell, but I love it. All the cables run through the attic and up into my office, and I can turn it on with this uh, little key fob thing or use Wake on LAN. Zero noise, zero heat, plugged into a UPS, what's not to like? I'm also running this weird little setup, which is a super tiny PC connected via USB to a Terramaster DAS. I did a video on it and said I'd leave it running for a while to see if anything breaks, and so far, it hasn't. Pretty boring. Then just over my shoulder here, I have my Zima board cluster. I don't really use it for anything, but it looks cool and sips like zero power. So I consider it more of an enhancement to the aesthetic of my office. Okay, that covers servers. Time to finish up with, well, everything else. The rack everything lives in is a 42U open rack from Navepoint. It was under $300 and is pretty good quality with casters too. Since the rack lives in my garage and I live in Texas, we need air conditioning. I installed a mini split unit, which works really well. A few months ago, I replaced the cheap Amazon curtains that make up the room with some industrial insulated curtains from Akon, not the wrapper, I don't think. These things do a pretty good job so far. I didn't get them in time to test them during our record high heat wave this summer, but Something tells me I won't have to wait long to find out. In terms of stuff in the actual rack, I've been using this Triplight 8 port KVM with a 15 inch screen. I like it because it only takes up one U of space and makes for a super sweet shelf. I honestly use it as a shelf like 90% of the time. I got it for $200 off of eBay, which isn't bad for a really sturdy shelf. Then no home lab would be complete without a proper UPS. In this case, I have two of these Triplight Smart LCD 1500 units, which gives me about 20 to 30 minutes of backup power. That's not bad considering my total usage for everything in my home lab sits around 650 to 700 watts. They are mostly useful though for when the power flickers so they can keep all my shit on and I don't have to worry about hard resets. I guess an honorable mention would be this power monitoring thing from Emporia. It clips over your wires in your breaker panel and measures the current going through those wires to give you a real time power output reading. The whole kit was about $150 and works really well. I can watch my home lab sucking the money right out of my pockets from the comfort of my own couch. And with that, I think we've pretty much covered everything in my home lab. I'll be the first to tell you that my setup isn't optimal, but it works for me and that's all that matters. Is everything gonna stay the way it is? Absolutely not. By the time this video goes live, there's probably something new in there, but that can wait until the 2024 edition. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you liked or what you think I could change to improve some things. If you like this video though, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss the software version of what's in my home lab, or just if you wanna see more of my videos. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 42U steel rack that's just so hard and big and
You guys are fantastic. And if you're still watching, you're cool too. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.